Yeah, get our YouTube viewers. I thought I'd do an autopsy on the signal generator that I recovered from the scrap metal recyclers. I had this in one of my previous videos. Anyways, I ended up going down to the local dump shop and purchased another workbench to do the job on. Because as you can see in my shed here, I'm running out of room and space and all getting a little bit too hard and cleaning up and trying to make this place look pretty too many projects on the go away eh? yeah anyway you can never have a shed big enough because you it's always going to get filled up eventually so anyway this signal generator is an RF signal generator it's a standard signal generator made by the General Radio Company, Massachusetts, USA. It's 240 volts. It has 400 or 1000 hertz modulation. And uh, it's used for alignment of radios and things like that. It's a very heavy device and be very well made. So I thought I'd sneak a look inside and we'll see what we have here. It's got a whole series of screws around the case, so it'll take a little time to extract them all. But anyway, I'll get started and come back to the video. Yeah, got the cover off after 26 screws, and uh, I just pulled the cover off now, this section here, a bit of a power supply section and stuff. So it's had a few spiders and things set up camping here, but a bit of a clean up, we'll get rid of them. Now you've got some voltage stabiliser tubes and voltage regulator rectifier tubes and that. Under this cover here. Looks like all the RF side in here. Looks pretty clean in this part, which is good. Big tuning cap. 6L6 valve. Another 6L6. Another tuning cap in this section. Yeah, a bit of solder that must have been spilt at some stage and it's been squashed against the case. Yeah, all in all, it looks like a very well made piece of test gear and hopefully it will still work when it comes to testing it. Funny thing I did find when I took the cover off was this, uh, this coil can is adrift, looks like it's probably been taken apart for some reason, unless the screw's just fallen out, but that would have sat in there and it also has a cover that normally sits on it, which I found inside. So that was the cover and the fixing screw that I found floating around inside the instrument. Still haven't found the spider, I reckon that one must have taken off. Yeah, hi again your mob. I've basically just cleaned this instrument out and got rid of the spiders and stuff and checked all the 
you know, some of the components, make sure there's no shorts or anything going on. So I thought I'll just power it up and just do the old smoke test. So I've just rigged up a bit of a dodgy lead for the power connection here. I've got a nerf for, for the safety of course and got the mains connected. I haven't got that style plug so I just sort of made a jury rig one for now. And I've just got that plugged in up here. So anyway, we'll power it up and just give a smoke test and see how we go here. Okay, power lights on. Heaters are alight on the tube. Voltage stabiliser is glowing, which is good. The ballast tube initially glowed, but it's gone out, so it's probably not drawing too much current, which is probably a good sign that there's no major shorts. So we'll just make sure that nothing's overheating at this stage. Then afterwards I'll reassemble it and uh, run a crow over it to see what kind of waveforms might be produced. Well, so far so good, no signs of any thermal stress going on. All the anodes are okay. Yeah, that device there is a ballast tube. It's basically has a filament in it, it's a bit like a lamp. And that's just to just to help limit the excess current and things, I guess. Yeah, good day again YouTube viewers. I've reassembled this signal generator and I've put in all 26 screws around the perimeter of this case here. Anyway, I thought I'll put this instrument through its paces and just see what's working and what's not. So I'm using a Hewlett Packard frequency counter and I've got an old oscilloscope here which I'll just look at the waveforms. So anyway, I'm just sort of exploring the 5 to 16 mega cycle range and at the moment I've just dialed in 14 mega cycles and I'm getting a reading up here about you know, 1402 so I'll just, I'll just trim it back a bit here and I see where it lands on the scale It's pretty close, it's a little bit out. At any rate, we'll drop down a go down the range a bit.
I'll dial into about 10 mega cycles, see what we've got. About there, I think. Yeah, anyway. Yeah, a little bit out there. But for lining old radios, it's probably not too bad. We'll go for a different range. One point six to five meter cycle range. Go for about three point two or something. Yes, yeah, not too bad. Yeah. So I'm just sort of looking here. Three point two. We're getting. Pretty close in there. Go about look at two point eight. Yeah, it's not too bad. Anyway, I was looking at the waveforms here, and I'm just changing the modulation. So it's on a thousand hertz modulation. I'll go to four hundred. See the change. So the modulation's working. And what I did find is that a couple of ranges uh, not getting any output at all. On the 50 to 160 kilocycles and the 16 to 50 kilocycles. There's no output going on at all with it. So it's probably a fault in the instrument. Something that needs to be checked out, but all the rest of the ranges seem to be working and reasonable accuracy.